This is Sal, and I'm still at Stanford Medical School with Dr. Connolly. Uh, yep, Sal, we're going to continue going. You're going to have to get, get one unit of credit for today. I oh, think. excellent. Okay. My, my mother would be proud. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we're going to look at today is a colon polyp. Uh, we had said before polyp is something that's going to stick up. Like I this. See. So that in that last video, what we saw, it wasn't. It was not a polyp. That was like an irritated, an irri irritated part of the. Of yeah, the it was. Bowel. It was very. It was very low lying. It was. Um, Let me get you the yeah. pen here. We got it so all the, tangled um, up. It was really just kind of a patch of irritant right there. I see. So we've got a bigger piece now. I see. That's why it just looks okay. Everything yeah. looks more. So you can see the glands look tiny in here. So roughly that last slide, how, how big would it be on this? Just it would, it would be about um, a, a piece like that. I and, see. And uh, to be fair, it probably what was. Uh, was what was underlying this area right here. I see. I see. And cool. then it grew on to be um, something more than okay. that. It wasn't this exact one. It, no, it, it wasn't. It, it so could grow on to be something like it this. It could problem. grow on to this. So this is something where when we have a colon resection, if there's a cancer, often there's a polyp. Right. There's an area of, of that patch like right. we saw with hyperplasia. That, that not necessarily where the cancer is. It's in that same no. section of colon. Yeah, we find right. that people, if they have a colon cancer, often they have lots of other pre-cancer lesions. I see. Because right, see just maybe their bowel is just going through a lot, like, a lot yeah. of trauma. Some of it's right. familial susceptibility, right. but um, a lot of it is that they are showing a propensity to this. I see. Don't know if it's from environmental exposures or what. I see. So. And just to, just to r remind myself on, on what we're doing here, so you cut out a bit of colon. It's kind of you can just kind of view it as a tube because there was some cancer there. Right. And then this thing might be some other polyp that's sitting in that same section that you cut out. Yeah. And then maybe that first that second slide we saw with the irritation that could be like right there or something. Yeah. I see. As a matter of fact, it's important um, that you normally wouldn't see this slide in a patient because almost all polyps, um, the colonoscopist is coming in mm -hmm. and they remove it. I see. Through the colonoscope. I see, because they don't know whether it's cancerous or they not. They don't know they, it's not. They'll right. remove it, but you wouldn't see the full wall. So right, right out here, I mean, that's all the way through the wall in which you've got muscle. Oh, I um, see. Here. I and see. So that's the muscular part of the wall. And so this is the, you know, really kind of going down to a full piece of the wall. I see. Wow. So, so this is a larger piece, and this is in order to show the polyp. Um, in its natural environment. Right. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to begin looking at the uh, the polyp here, and so um, we'll first start way out here, which is to wow. go back again <laughs> to the the normal architecture. Right. Right. So we had said there's supposed to be tubes. Luckily, this one it's cut right down the middle of the tube, so you can see how you big the it. hole is supposed right, to be. Right. And so, yeah, this is normal architecture there. And then if I um, just go out a little bit, and I'm just going to come along you can see that you have an area here in which there's a bit of irritation. So it's a thrown up a little bit like we saw before, but right. the real trouble is this thing sticking out. Right. And we wonder, what is that thing sticking out? And so for the medical students, we try to tell them to think like the way the pathologist would be, that you first need to look at the overall architecture. Right. This is an abnormal architecture. Yes. You don't usually yes. have bumps sticking out. Yeah. Then the next thing you're going to do in is... In 3D, would it look like a mushroom? Um, yeah. Kind of so like it looked like a mushroom. Right, Actually, right. they tend to have uh, foldings on the top of them, so a little more like cauliflower. Oh, I see. Because they oh, tend okay. to be That's... cauliflower color. I see. So um, then when you look here... Is that color, too? The color uh, of cauliflower yeah, they don't have much oh, color to them. Oh, and okay. in fact, the, um, the colonoscopist, when they look at a polyp, right. can kind of tell if there's a chance of cancer because they begin having weird blood vessels. In I it. see. And just to be clear, so they're not this purplish color that we're seeing no, in this slide. No, this, this is... is a... This artificial a color added. Thin section, and we had to put this. It would be colorless otherwise, so we had to put a stain right, on it. Right, right, right. Makes, makes sense. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the area where I'm going to do a comparison. See this thing with Bob here? Yeah. Oh, you're going to look at this. that. That's yeah. Look at that. So now. M miracles of science. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> <The> great. Technology. <laughs> so, um, so these are um, cells which are relatively normal. These are cells which are right. abnormal. And when we look at them, a pathologist immediately says these look angry. They do. And they so, do look angry. I would say that too. And so when yeah. you look at so what's angry about them <laughs> is, first of all, they're not committed to being, uh, to behaving. Um, proper behavior over here, nuclei belong at the bottom. Right. The things that you're supposed to do for your job, J-O-B, right. are at the top. Yes. And yes. so when you look at these guys, it's like, where, where's your job? Yes. And so a few of them are making mucin. But these ones have nuclei of different sizes and shapes. Yeah, and they're all just... They're just doing their own thing. And they're thing. not even doing mucin. They're, no, they're some make mucin, but a lot of them, out. all they're doing is growing. Right. And so usually there's a playoff between 
that if you're committed to um, your specific job, for, right. we call it differentiation. Right. right. So if you're committed to your differentiation, um, uh, you tend not to have as much propensity to grow. Yeah. And if you tend to grow a lot, you yes. tend not to do the differentiation. And so this is largely that you have um, this sort of chaos of nuclei, less commitment to the normal structures, right. and you're not producing as much. And so what this is, is this is now called dysplasia. Dysplasia. D-Y-S. Right. It's doing the wrong thing. And so, so yes, yeah, the yeah. wrong growth. Right, right. And so that's what we're just saying is we don't like the looks of these ones. And so these individual cells look um, dysplastic and they grow. So then to tell whether it's cancer, mm -hmm. cancer means in this organ that you've grown across this line in the sand. So let me let me. So literally, so if, if you've crossed this boundary right over here, cancer. Right. So you, so even if I'm in the polyp up here and I'm controlling uncontrollably, you know, mm -hmm. cancer cells and it's mutated and it's not killing itself with what right. it's supposed to, you still would not call it so, officially um, cancer? No. So what happens is that um, there's um, a middle term right. where it's a cancer in the, still in the usual place. Right. And that's carcinoma in situ. To get I see. Them. Okay. So that's carcinoma in situ means... It's not an invasive cancer, and right. therefore most people would not really call it a cancer. It's just so wild looking up here. Right. You know that it would do that if it, had, if it was given any chance or time. I see. So what we're saying is if something was out here, mm -hmm. uh, a carcinoma in, in situ, yeah. Uh, that, that eventually it probably would make its way. Yeah, it just looks so keep committed until, to growth and right, so aggressive and right. so little differentiation right. that you know if you gave it time, you'd worry no, that it, it would makes, grow. That makes sense. So with here, though, this is dysplasia, right. where it's, it's very upsetting that it's growing so fast. Right. But what's important about this right. is in hyperplasia, Right. If you took away the stimulus or irritant, right. it would go back to normal. Yes. This will not. I see. Like we said, like if there's some irritant in the last video, we said like a week mm -hmm. later, or a couple of weeks later, that, that hyperplasia would go away. Right. Dysplasia is here to stay. That's this right. Is, this is and so the key word we use is autonomous. Autonomous. It's doing its, its own it's thing. It's independent. Right, it's just right. whatever. So it will grow no matter what. It doesn't care about clues from neighboring cells. Right. It doesn't need something driving it. So what you have then is this is growing. Right. Um, and if it's growing... And it's all by itself and growing. It's then called a neoplasia. So that's neoplasia. our last plasia. Right. So neoplasia showing dysplasia. So, so yeah. So dysplasia just right. is more of when you go into um, look at these guys, these features. Oh, it's like this particular feature. These uh, cells feature. Right. aren't growing right. I see. And so that's an example of dysplasia. Right. That's dysplasia. And then overall, this lump right. is a new growth. New growth. Neo. It's a neoplasia. Right. And we u reserve it in, in um, the medical field for being it's growing on its own. And how do we know it's new? Because as you said, it, it sticks around. Yeah. Like the hyperplasia. So so how, how do we know this wasn't around for like a year? Oh, it probably was. So oh, okay. I, I think it actually came from an area here. Mm -hmm. And the thinking would be that you probably had irritants or hyperplasia. Right. It would continue to grow. Cells divide. Cells right. divide too much. And then one of them made a mistake. I see. And so went, then went it nuts. then clicked on something where... It would say, you know what? From now on, I'm not listening to any right. clues. It kept working, and then all of its descendants were crazy too. That's yes. right. So then yes. it would then have a um, a real uh, mean streak. Yes. And so then they would grow from here. So this is an area where you can see. I even... see that pattern in my own family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so then here, these are more normal glands, but right. even these, yes, that's dysplasia. Right. Right. So these are um, growing, and they do not have a good pattern of growth. Right. And overall, this lump right. is a neoplasia. I see. I see. So when we say new, it's kind of newer than the other tissue. Oh uh, yeah, and we don't it's, really it's mean so much the new for um, meaning that's newer than the other as much as it's its own thing. I see. New okay. ki new kid on the block. Okay. Okay. And so so right. this is the neoplasia here. I see. I see. All right. So this one here is a polyp. Um, it has features of dysplasia. Right. Um, but we would say we see no cancer. I see. I, how would you know that? And so, um, and, oh, oh, right, because it never crossed the boundary line. And this is, there's a reason why the boundary is important is that if you look here, these are all the surface cells. Um, down here, that these are the vessels that go to the rest of the body. Right. I so see. these are blood vessels. Right. These ones are called lymphatics, and what lymphatics are is they just take the clear fluid right. around there. So, so, so these. These right here, these are the lymphatics, the clear fluid. Right. And there is uh, – fluid can go back and forth between blood vessels and the, and the, the lymph system. Yeah, so, usually so what happens is that 
um, blood comes in an artery like this, right. goes on down to these little vessels, and then a little bit of the clear parts of it right. will kind of leak it, out into like the, the red blood cells are, are too big to yeah, kind of leak they'll out. Stay right, in right, there. Right. So then the lymph is the clear stuff that comes out, and then this is how it gets back to the rest of your body are through these lymphatics. So you can see you do not want neoplastic cells in there. Right, because once in there, not either they can they can get to any part of the body. Go to any place, yeah, and then yeah, guess right. what? Set up shop, new kids on the block, they just do what right, they want to do. Mis mis I can't say the word, metastasis. Metastasis. <laughs> metastasis. Yeah. So metastasis would be, um, if it gets right. into these things, right. it can get out of the colon and go anywhere in, in the hurry. body. Right. So, um, so this is one where um, it is not cancer, um, and it has not invaded these areas where it gets to the rest of the body. Fascinating, fascinating.